Okay, hi everyone. Um, once again, sorry I couldn't be there to, to deliver the session in person today, but what I'm doing instead is um, I'm going to do a brief video um, to really go over um, the assignment you've got to do, um, the second half of the assignment I'm going to focus on, which is the reflective account of the workshop you're doing. Um, because there's a particular type of writing that, you, that you're required to do in this called reflective writing, um, which might be quite different to the other kind of writing that you've done for other assignments so far. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time highlighting what those differences are and what's expected of you for that assessment. Remember this part of the assessment is worth 50%. So the workshop in the school that you're doing on Friday is going to count for half uh, of, of the mark and the account you do afterwards um, uh, is, is another 50%. So in a way, um, even if the workshop doesn't go as as um, as well as you hope, um, the, um, you won't necessarily get a bad mark because the reflective account is where you demonstrate what you've learned from that experience. So, if the workshop goes badly, what we'd be looking for, or not badly, but you know, if, if things didn't go as expected, as you had issues, for example, with with timing or or pitching it to the uh, to, to the level of the students or differentiating within the classroom, that kind of thing, then the reflective account is your opportunity to identify those aspects of it, um, reflect on what happened, but also why it happened, and what you would do in the future um, to ensure that something like that didn't happen. So um, really, thinking of it in that way, you, 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 you realise that, uh, that the assignment is designed to be a learning experience in and of itself. So you, you, you do the workshop, and then you learn from it by reflecting on your experience and this is uh, as I mentioned I think at the beginning of the course reflective writing and, and what, what's called reflective practice which is where you actually reflect on what you've done and then um, change what you're doing um, on the basis of your reflection so for example next time you do something you do it differently based on what you've reflected on from the time before this is a cornerstone of teacher education in any setting so if any of you go on to do a, a PGCE after um, then um, reflective practice and reflective writing will be central to how you're taught doing that. And it's also part of um, ongoing professional development for teachers um, in, when they're already employed and in schools. Um, undertaking uh, assessed, assessed sessions, so when a peer or a, or a, a manager will come in and, and watch them teaching, then afterwards reflecting on that, um, it is central to how uh, teachers maintain um, a, a kind of awareness of what they do and constantly improve how they how they teach in the classroom. Okay, so let's have a look at the um, let's have a look at the assignment brief uh, quickly. Um, where are they? I was on the wrong page there. Here we go. Yeah, so the assessed workshop in the school, as has already been explained to you, you're doing a 40 to 60 minute uh, group session, okay? Um, so for those of you that are in the um, in the group of four, it's probably going to be a slightly shorter workshop than those in the group of five. But um, you're delivering this as a group, okay? And within that group, remember, each person has to contribute um, a proportion of time when they are leading something. Okay, so um, I mean we've been through this in class, but you've you've, you've divvied up your uh, session into um, phases, as it were. But so, for example, one person doing a warm up, next person leading the first activity, um, next person the next one, and so on. So there are two aspects to it really. One is your ability to work as a group together and to deliver a, a workshop effectively as a group. Um, and also how well as an individual you contribute to that, okay, and, and your your um, your ability to lead on something. So if you look at the criteria you're assessed at, there's um, clarity of leadership, evidence of research and planning, imaginative and fluent employment of a variety of suitable music and non-musical stimuli, activities and compositional techniques, creation of a high quality learning environment, presentation, organisation and communication. Okay, so while they're all the criteria against which your um, workshop is going to be assessed, you also want to address all those things. 
explicitly in your assignments? Have you talking about how what your experience of leadership was like? Did you feel that your leadership style was clear and um, and, and assertive, or were there aspects of that, that you want to work on? Similarly, did you re did you re did you research and plan your workshop enough? Did you did you give it enough dummy runs? Um, that you felt confident to deliver a successful workshop, or was that something that you, next time you would you would put more time in? So thinking about these aspects of the workshop and reflecting on them is the kind of thing that we want you to do in the um, in the reflective uh, um, evaluation. Okay, so the reflective evaluation you'll see here, um, your um, it's fifteen hundred words, so not an enormous piece of work, but um, nonetheless there's enough words there for you to to give some quite deep um, deep insight about uh, about your experience okay so looking at the rationale um, what, what you want in the rationale rationale being um, explaining why you did what why you chose to do what you did okay um, we want to see the reasons behind the choices made okay so these are this is um, that that why thing again okay asking asking why you've done asking yourself why you've done something None of this should be arbitrary, okay? You shouldn't just go into a classroom and do something because, just because. There'll be a reason you, you chose to do something, okay? So be clear about those and set them out, okay? So, for example, you may have chosen a particular type of, uh, of music or setting because it was something... So I'm thinking of one of the groups who I know are doing um, something from Pitch Perfect, now, there will be a reason you've chosen to do something from Pitch Perfect, which is probably to do with students' familiarity with it. It's popular. Um, it's well known. So you'll be engaging them on that um, on that level of familiarity. But also, um, you know, there are um, the activity itself is very uh, the, the, the cup activity is something that um, that can be uh, pitched at the right kind of kind of level and I think that was the reason you, you chose it and you when I watched you working on it the other day you were um, simplifying the uh, the cup um, rhythm um, in order to make it accessible to the um, to the age group that you're working with so those kind of things are what you want to write into your um, into your rationale okay um, don't just say we did this we want to know why okay <clears throat> and, um, and as you can see, there's the other aspects there, such as you know, uh, differentiation, um, differentiation meaning uh, w differentiation within the classroom. So not only pitching it at uh, you know a, a level eight classroom, but um, a, a year eight classroom, but also um, thinking about that within that classroom, there are going to be children of different abilities, and um, and your aim is to provide a um, a, a worthwhile and meaningful learning experience for all. Okay, which means that you have to differentiate to um, to give support where needed and make your uh, activity accessible to those different um, different students. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, but as as I mentioned, there's a, there, there's a particular type of writing that you have to do, which is called reflective writing. So. I'm going to move on to that now and, and just um, and just discuss what, what what you'll need to do. Okay, so the idea behind reflective writing is that if we just do stuff, we don't really learn from it because um, it's actually you know we do stuff all the time but to actually learn from it we have to take stock and um, think back at what we've done and engage with the feelings and thoughts that uh, um, that come out from that and that will give us pointers about what we do um, going forward so as Gibbs says it's not sufficient simply to have an experience in order to learn without reflecting on the experience it may quickly be forgotten or its learning potential lost it is from the feelings and thoughts emerging from the reflections that generalizations or concepts can be generated, and it is generalizations that allow new situations to be tackled effectively. And that should be our goal always 
um, in, in, as, as educators because we're going to encounter the same settings and similar settings over and over again. We want to make sure that um, we don't keep making the same mistakes um, and also that we take opportunities to, to improve what we do always. Okay, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but if you think of this as a cycle of learning, uh, starting at the top with concrete experience, meaning what actually happens, the, your um, being in the classroom doing something which is an actual experience in a physical setting, uh, a social experience and so on. The next step is reflective observation, think, reflecting on what you've done. Um, oh, I did, you know, I, that was good, but, um, but that aspect of what I did was, was less good. Then comes abstract conceptualization, which is when you start to um, formulate an understanding of what you did and, um, and maybe attach labels to it and things like that. And active experimentation is when the next time you go into, uh, into a setting, you, you experiment with what you've learned. You, you make changes, interventions, which leads to a new experience, and then the cycle continues. Okay, so that's, that's how... Uh, that's how Kolb, who, who, who presented this model, um, sees learning as taking place through experience. Um, there's a video there you can you can watch about it. I'm going to put these slides on the on the Moodle. <coughs> I won't spend too much time on this now. Um, but yeah, going back to Gibbs, Gibbs looking at Kolb's work, Gibbs decided that there were uh, stages we could follow to make our reflections uh, richer. And the first is description. Okay, so always to get an understanding of what um, of what we've done, we need to have a clear um, description. Okay, now descriptive writing doesn't make value judgments. Okay, it, it's simply an account of things that have happened. So this is a good place to start with reflective writing. Describe your workshop in dry uh, details, basically pointing out um, what happened, when. And the, the key um, phases or steps in what you did. Okay, at this stage, you're just writing this down so that you have an account to hand of what happened. Okay, so you'll be drawing on this, for example, from the the workshop template that you've you're drawing up in advance of the of the teaching next week, uh, this week rather. But um, this will be different because this is an account. This isn't an account of what you wanted to happen. This is an account of what actually happened. So you might need to revisit the timings that you have on your workshop template and 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 amend them in light of what actually happened, okay? Because uh, you know these settings can be quite unpredictable. The next step is uh, to identify to to note against that what your feelings and reactions were, okay? Um, feelings may sound you know you know we we're not expecting to talk about our feelings in a kind of in, in it, it's you know that sounds a bit cuddly that but what I actually mean is you're you're talking about your emotional response to things so this could be for example feeling anxious about um, doing something um, how did it feel to be standing in front of 30 um, learners all expecting you to teach them something did you feel nervous did you feel apprehensive did you feel confident um, were you uh, were you comfortable physically in that setting? All these things will impact upon the experience you had, so it's important to um, to identify that. Okay. The next thing to think about is um, your own value judgments about what happened. So this is where you undertake some evaluation. Okay. By by value judgments, I mean. Um, saying what you thought was good and what you thought was bad okay so some of these things you will uh, you will think okay yeah uh, that 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 um, warmer that we did um, went really well the students enjoyed it um, you know it got them engaged that was successful okay so you can from your perspective you need to say whether you thought it was successful or not okay and different people may have different feelings about this but remember you're writing this as an individual Okay, so your subjective uh, thoughts about what happened are valid here, and that's what we want to hear. Okay, um, 
similarly if something went went badly say um, say so but also don't just see this as a kind of um, binary of good or bad try and be a bit more see that as a spectrum okay so things went see things went quite well less well than expected um, make those value judgments and try and ascertain how successful things were okay um, the next step is analysis okay this is where you're looking at um, you you're thinking about that situation and thinking well you know why was that the case um, and when I say bringing ideas from outside the experience to help you this is where you might draw on what um, something you've been reading for example about what classrooms are like and, and it, you might think actually my experience there was similar to what um, Palmer wrote in the article I read um, or you might be drawing upon your prior experience in a different setting so for example you might have experience of working in community groups I know some of you have done some done some work in uh, in community settings um, and something may have may have worked really well in a community setting and less well in, in, in the classroom so this is where you will say you will compare those experiences and, and try and understand if there's um, something different about this particular experience that meant that that went uh, less well so drawing upon your experience outside of this particular um, teaching event um, to try and understand better what's actually happening there okay then we come to the point of drawing conclusions all right so um, you need to conclude um, a kind of overarching evaluation of the success of your workshop um, but also be specific about um, thinking about you know uh, ultimately um, what did it tell you about how you are as a teacher okay so what can be concluded about your own specific unique personal situation or ways of working so this will hopefully tell you something about what you're like as a teacher you will be um, for some of you this will be your first experience of leading something uh, real and authentic in a classroom you, may, uh, you know aside from the practice we've been doing in, in, in the sessions this is the first time you've actually stood up in front of a classroom and done something so it's going to be an important uh, event for you to um, to draw out your strengths and, uh, and weaknesses at this stage they're not always going to be your strengths and weaknesses but it will give you pointers as to what you need to work on so make conclusions in that respect okay and secondly uh, sorry, and finally, the uh, personal action plan. Okay, um, this is where you think forward. Okay, so reflection is about thinking back on what you've done and reflecting on something that's already happened. But a key part of it, at the end of it, is to think forward and think about what would happen next time. Okay, so this is where we'd like you to say, you know, um, if I were to undertake this again, um, I would change A, B, and C. Um, and so on and so forth. I will, and also talk again about your your feelings. You know, I was I was anxious undertaking that first um, exercise because we hadn't planned it so much in the classroom. Next time, um, so that I feel more confident, I'm going to spend more time um, planning and going through the work uh, through that uh, exercise before we get into the classroom. That kind of thing. All right. Um, yeah. So the, I've also included on here. Um, Another um, template that you can that you can follow if it's if it's helpful for you about how to um, how to write up your 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 evaluation. Okay, um, so yeah, just to summarise, the key points of reflective writing are you are not just describing something, although description plays a part. You're reflecting on it. You're reflecting on your feelings and emotions. You're making value judgments about whether something went well or not. And you're analysing it and asking why questions. You're trying to work out why things were the way they were. Okay, and then finally, you're looking forward to the next time. <coughs> I've put some links here to some reflective writing guidance from other universities. There's one from Exeter and one from Southampton Solent. <coughs> These will be useful for you in, um, in reading a bit more about reflective writing if you want to. Okay, um, so. I hope that's been useful. If it's unclear, as I say, a lot of this is um, it, it, this is quite theory based. 
in the sense that we're we're, we're following Gibbs's idea of how to reflect, uh, how to write reflectively. Um, often this sort of stuff starts to make better sense when you just get out there and, and do it. So um, when you start writing, you'll this will become much more intuitive, and you'll understand. Um, I'm going to be around next Tuesday between two and four. I'm going to be in the uh, in the clock tower uh, building, um, the, the the cafe there. I'm just going to sit there for um, for anybody who wants to come and, and discuss their um, their uh, assignment with me, and and I can help you then if, if there's anything in this that you haven't understood. I can give you some um, some pointers as to how to approach your your um, your piece of reflective writing. If you want to come and see me during that um, session, please just send me an email in advance so I know who to expect and, 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 and who not to expect. I know uh, Duncan is also giving um, tutorials that week. Okay, so um, best of luck for Friday. Um, I know you've been working very hard on your on your workshop plan, so I hope that goes really well. And um, And I'll see you next week.